I got my, my taste back. Then all of a sudden what happens is they kick me out, so now it's time to spend time in my tent again, getting my shit, shit together, right? So as I'm getting my stuff together again in there, guess what happens? Last night, now I'm all stuffed up again. Um, I feel like I've got a cold. It's horrible. Where, where are you staying? I was at the Youth Detention Center. How is it? Mm. Well, I could tell you a few things out, that's for sure. First of all, if they want you out of there, they lie. They'll make up uh, lies about you, they'll turn um, the residents on you, the staff will actually uh, uh, work together with clients to, to bother you and harass you. Um, I was informed that I'd thrown something at staff, I never threw anything at a staff member. I had found a wooden dildo that I suppose the students, when, well not the students, but the incarcerated individuals that were there at the time, the youth, um, were using for sex education. And so I can only assume that one of the staff members found a box full of the, uh, these wooden dildos and um, handed a couple out to some of the residents because they, they would have been under lock and key. And the residents were just putting them in my purse and I'd reach in to get my smoke out and there would be a dildo. And, and it was really, really uh, quite disturbing. Um, so I took it. So, out of, so you're in Tent City here. How, how was it? How, yeah, that's where you are I right now. I had one of the best sleeps that I've had in the last eight days since I went to the Youth Detention Center coming back here. The yeah. Youth Detention Center, the kids are running around. There's absolutely no checks and balances. They're yelling, they're shouting, they're chasing each other on the tents like a bunch of little children. And um, to tell you the truth, most of the people that are out there aren't from Tent City. Yeah. They're not from Tent City. They've just taken them from somewhere and, and put them into the hodgepodge of, of people. And I don't feel that Patrick, the individual that was uh, made uh, responsible for, for uh, uniting the individuals here to go out there, um, is doing a very good job. And I told him so. Also, the staff are eating our food. There was 10 staff members on for eight residents at one time. And they were eat all of them eating and mowing down on our food. And when you take that and you double it up or triple it up for the different shifts in every day, that's a lot of food. Um, um, someone asked them what they were going to do after six months when the lease ran out. And they said, well, we'll have to look for more funding. More funding? They have $64 million. What, what's the, $64 million is going to run through your fingertips like, like, like sands through a sieve? And you're going to look for more funding in six months? I think that's ridiculous. I believe that if staff were to bring their own lunches like most people do to work and save on some of the food budget, it may, might go for seven months. So that was one of the issues that I asked them about. You going to stay there? No. No, I've been kicked out. I've been asked to, not asked to leave. I was told to leave. And basically, if I didn't leave by 3 o'clock, I, I asked him if they were going to phone the authorities to have me forcibly removed. And he led me to believe by, by saying that he was basically sad to have to do so if it came to that. So I headed right down to the RCMP station right away. And I gave them the, the get-go on what's going there on there. And at the end of the day, they decided it was a residential um, tenancy-type situation. It was not anything that the RCMP would be interested in acting on. So I went back to the youth detention center and I let them know so but however I did still leave simply because of the fact that it's very uncomfortable there uh, people were calling me names they were calling me old um, just just really nasty and there's no checks and balances thank, thank you Catherine you're very welcome